Welcome dear dental students in this recording of uh, the lecture. This lecture is included within the endodontic course for fifth year students, dental students, which is named endodontic failure. As you know, endo treatment is uh, subdivided into three main uh, three main steps. The first step is the diagnosis and planning phase, and we have the preparatory phase in which the preparation of the canal is done and. The last phase is the obliteration and obturation phase. Errors in diagnosis and treatment planning and examination are summarized in previous lectures. The errors and mishaps in endo treatment in this uh, few slides are summarized and categorized into, into uh, several steps. These are access related and the errors related to instrumentation and the errors related to obturation and we have miscellaneous errors and mishaps. As you know, the first step in endo treatment is the excess. The first silly and a common mistake in uh, endo treatment is treating the wrong tooth. Sometimes, careless diagnosis and careless uh, management of the case not isolating the accused tooth with a rubber dam. One of the benefits of rubber dam is to isolate and uh, clarify the accused tooth for uh, work and for treatment. So uh, sometimes error will be and uh, pain will persist and uh, endo treatment uh, will fail to treat the symptoms and pain of the patient and the patient still comply, uh, comply of pain so uh, a treatment for the wrong tooth must be done. Other error related to excess and related to the uh, procedure of treatment is the is missing a canal. Sometimes we do access and remove pulp extirpation uh, and uh, the patient still feel uh, pulpal pain and uh, symptoms of pulpitis such as sensitivity and night pain because of the remaining pulp structure in a missing canal. This error is commonly uh, seen in a multi-rooted and multi-multi-rooted uh, tooth, and sometimes multi-canal root. Sometimes the patient have uh, ha uh, has vari variation by having uh, more than one canal in a root, and uh, a difference and variation in the number of the canals. So good. Uh, excess opening and uh, removal of the uh, roof and deroofing of the pulp chamber must be done in order to observe all the canal cavity and uh, all the uh, pulp chamber and uh, to explore uh, the orifices of the canals uh, for complete uh, pulp extirpation and relief of any uh, sign uh, any symptoms of uh, pain and palpal pain uh, to the patient.
this uh, error can be uh, prevented by the use of microscope that simplify the vision and aid the uh, exploration of the canal during treatment radiograph is also useful for prevention of this type of uh, errors especially uh, the radiograph from different direction or shifting of the uh, in the direction of radiograph to uh, as we mentioned before the and the benefits of uh, diagnostic radiograph it give us it give us the uh, structure and uh, the pulp uh, anatomy and the root canal configuration and number of roots <coughs> and the tooth to be treated sometimes in excess we damage the existing restoration as you know sometimes uh, the tooth to be treated has uh, a previous uh, filling or a previous uh, bridge or a restoration so in excess sometimes damage or fracture or coronal fracture uh, will uh, be done in uh, in the accused tooth so careful uh, excess opening and cavity preparation must be done for the uh, pulp to be uh, for the tooth to be treated one of the errors in excess opening when uh, perforation is done either for the lateral canal or sometimes in the bifurcation area absence of experience and knowledge about the tooth anatomy and uh, non careful observation of the root canal of the uh, tooth uh, long axis uh, and abnormal uh, ab, uh, we can say uh, not investigating the radiograph the diagnostic radiograph carefully to explore the position of the canals and to do access opening any diminish in these criteria we uh, will subject the tooth and the procedure for error and for uh, perforation can be done for the lateral or the bifurcation area so we advise the dental advise dental student to practice on extracted teeth before uh, especially when he uh, go to uh, t for treating of uh, posterior teeth and molars he has to practice on extracted teeth to uh, have some experience in the uh, tooth anatomy and uh, the pulp chamber anatomy and the position of the canals before he get into uh, natural uh, patient as you know a non-vital tooth is brittle and uh, some teeth are subjected to occlusal trauma these teeth uh, may be subjected to uh, root canal uh, sorry uh, crown fracture or crack during uh, excess opening one of the errors is the vertical root fracture vertical root fracture can be uh, done for uh, the treated tooth if there is stress and force uh, of intracanal instrument inside the canal so gentle instrumentation must be done and irrigation and softening uh, gels and creams should be done during instrumentation of the canal to prevent such type of error <coughs> now we will go to 
the errors and mishaps associated with instrumentation. Using large instrument in a small canal or uh, the absence of graduation of the instrument when we treat the canal I mean uh, use of gradual sizes from small sizes and a gradual enlargement of the canal using lubricants and uh, copious irrigation uh, so absence of the uh, previous mentioned uh, points will uh, invite a ledge formation especially in a curved canal the ridge formation is cutting from the lateral wall of the canal of the curved canal this is very subjected to uh, perforation of the root uh, it can be uh, can be felt by the uh, difficulty to reach the full working length and the difficulty to reach after uh, we uh, could reach the working length and after instrumentation we place the small size of file and we feel stoppage of the file inside the canal and not going through the canal to the apical area so we can feel the ledge and the walls of the canal this uh, can be treated by using of small size files uh, copious irrigation and uh, use of EDTA cream to soften the canal walls during instrumentation and using a pre-curved instrument in stainless steel files we can uh, pre-curve the instrument uh, before getting inside the canal in order not to cut from the outer wall perforation is one of the errors uh, occur in instrumentation the perforation can be in the apical part or in the stripping in the sides of the canal Stripping uh, is meant, uh, we mean by stripping, cutting from the, uh, from the lateral walk of the wall of the canal by over instrumentation and over widening of a narrow and thin walled canal. So, uh, perforation in the bifurcation on the lateral wall of the canal may be done. This can be recognized by uh, uh, when we dry the canal by uh, paper point there will be a bleeding area in the middle of the paper point that indicates stripping or lateral perforation while uh, when the bleeding and uh, the uh, liquid uh, found the canal is in the apical part of the uh, paper point that means it is apical bleeding or seepage of a flu as we said uh, ledge formation and cutting of uh, the lateral wall of a curved instrument using of non uh, flexible instrument and hard instrument or large instrument in a curved canal will do perforation and apical perforation of the canal this can be felt by hemorrhage and the bleeding and uh, crucial pain and the uh, during treatment and uh, post-operative also post-operative pain and uh, investigated by radiograph by placing get a perk file and taking radiograph we will see perforation this invite uh, irritation to periodontal ligament and uh, periodontal periodontitis and uh, cause uh, decrease the success rate of the uh, case and of the treatment and uh, do uh, problem and complication uh, for the patient 
sometimes non careful use or uh, continuous uh, use for uh, many times of instrument inside the canal subject it to fatigue we, ca uh, we have to notice the uh, instruments intracanal instrument before treatment we have to observe them uh, usually in case of uh, an winding of the instrument or uh, fatigue or uh, weak points in the intracanal instrument these instruments must be discarded uh, instantly because the use of such instrument inside the canal may fracture and the removal of the separated instrument in the canal is very difficult we can uh, summarize the steps for removal of a separated instrument into four main procedures uh, if it is in the coronal part widening of the lateral wall of the canal can be done by special uh, ultrasonic devices and there is a special kits for removal of separated instrument use ultrasonic tips to widen the canal and to loosen the uh, separated instrument sometimes if it is in the mid route we can bypass such type of separated instrument by cutting a new canal adjacent to the separated instrument to complete the obturation and sealing of the canal uh, sometimes if it is in the apical part and it is difficult to remove the separated instrument we warn the patient and obturate the canal above the separated instrument and of course it will diminish the success of such case and warn the patient if there is any irritation or uh, pain or discomfort in the apical area so uh, apical surgery and uh, retrograde uh, endofilling must be done and episectomy must be done especially if uh, over extension of the separated instrument to the periodontal area canal blockage can be done during uh, instrumentation by compacting dentinal debris inside the canal this compaction of debris must be washed uh, continuously during treatment by the use of large amount of irrigation material use of um, softening uh, intracanal uh, conditioning pastes and creams during instrumentation and EDTA cream as an example uh, hypochlorite is very important in lubrication of uh, the canal during instrumentation and aid in dissolving organic material and loosening of inorganic debris uh, recapitulation is the negotiation of the canal during the steps of instrumentation negotiation by smaller size of intracanal instrument in order to uh, cut these debris and uh, flush them away from the canal during treatment also the use of large file and non-gradual uh, sizing of instrument during instrumentation can cause canal blockage this can be felt by stoppage of the file in, uh, uh, in a short area of the apical uh, working length and uh, the fine uh, the intracanal instrument refused to reach the full working length and there is a stopper and there is 
uh, resistance for the uh, entrance of intracanal instrument the use of uh, EDTA creams and use of uh, copious of uh, irrigation can uh, degrade uh, these debris and result in cleaning of the canal the last uh, section of the uh, lecture is the uh, errors and mishaps related to obturation most treatment failures uh, are uh, related to uh, wrong and faulty obturation and the most common uh, error of an obturation is either the underextended or overextended obturation in case of underextended obturation we can retreat the canal by removal of gutta perca and do retreatment while the overextended is more difficult and more dangerous because of irritation to periapical area and an overextended obturation uh, apical surgery and uh, retrograde uh, endofilling and uh, episectomy is indicated some errors are related to irrigation the faulty irrigation technique by pushing the irrigation mater material can can do inflammation and uh, discomfort and problems for the soft tissues adjacent to the treated tooth so irrigation must be inserted in the canal by using special tips and special needles with uh, lateral and uh, side opening and uh, non-forceful uh, uh, insertion of the irrigant solution inside the canal an error for an endo treatment is tissue emphysema the, this is caused by entrance of air bubbles inside the uh, soft tissues adjacent to the uh, apical foramen and to the apex of a treated tooth can do inflammation and do swelling for the uh, patient so uh, dryness of the canal must be done using uh, cotton pellets and the use of triple syringe or air syringe inside the canal is contraindicated these were the main errors and uh, summary for the main errors in uh, endo treatment uh, thank you for listening dear dental students and goodbye